Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Alan Mankwich from the Canadian Centre on Disability Studies. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about our visitability project. It's a three-year project uh, that uh, ends at the end of March. And um, so I'll just start off by telling you a little bit about CCDS. Uh, we're an organization that works on a, a number of different uh, disability issues. Uh, we re-envision community through collaborative research, education and development on cross-disability issues, inclusive of mental health. We're guided by and work out of the values of inclusion, equity and participation. And we partner with the disability community, co corporate sector, academia and government on a wide range of projects. I'd just like to acknowledge our funders for uh, this project that I'm going to be talking to you about. Uh, for this project, we were funded by the Government of, Government of Canada's Social Development Partnerships Program, the Disability Component, as well as Manitoba Renewal, Housing and Renewal Corporation, who funded a small part of the project. So as I mentioned, it was a three-year national initiative uh, ending in March 2016. The goal was to promote visitable housing across Canada. Our key activities included res uh, research, developing a resource list, our Visitability Awards of Excellence, an online campaign, and uh, development of a range of promotional and information materials. Uh, as Trudy mentioned, we had six task forces across Canada. Uh, we had one task force on Vancouver Island that was comprised of two First Nations, uh, another one in Richmond, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Ottawa, and Kitchener-Waterloo. Uh, Trudy already introduced us to the concept of visitabilities. Uh, so uh, again, it's just the no-step entrance, wider doors and halls on the main floor, and a main floor washroom that can be accessed by someone using a mobility device. Uh, Trudy covered some of these already, but uh, again, the advantages uh, facilitate social inclusion, easy access for everyone. Uh, it's a good option for a number of uh, different groups. Uh, it facilitates aging in place, and it reduces the risk of falls or injuries. Uh, as we went through the project, we heard uh, several perspectives about visitability. Uh, one of them was uh, around market demand. The common perception is the market is not demanding it. Uh, what visitability advocates would say to that is that consumers are not aware of the concept. Uh, in terms of regulation, we heard that homes are a private domain and shouldn't be subject to regulation. Uh, what, we, what we would say to that is homes that are homes are built on a based on various laws building codes and bylaws which regulate detailed uh, conditions of the home. For example, you can't build a home without smoke detectors. Uh, we also heard about costs. Uh, the perception is that visitability increases con construction costs, making homes less affordable. Um, but as Trudy mentioned, as you, uh, if you incorporate those features at, at the time of the home build, uh, the co additional costs are very minimal. Uh, there's several factors that affect costs, including, including topography, design for no step entrance, uh, basement design and compensation for any reduced living spaces on the main floor. Uh, we also heard about site constraints. Uh, some people think many sites have major constraints uh, to, the no step, to prevent a no step entry. Uh, what we would say is only a small portion of sites ha uh, have constraints that would present a, prevent a no step entry. Uh, I'll just highlight a couple policies, uh, recent policies that were developed around visitability in Canada. Uh, in 2014, Vancouver passed a visitability bylaw. It uh, applies to all newly built homes. Uh, it calls for wider doors and hallways and uh, a main floor bathroom uh, that can be used by a person with a mobility device. Uh, one thing they excluded from the bylaw for some reason was the no step entrance. Uh, the City of Winnipeg also developed accessibility design standards for uh, the Bridgewater neighborhood, which I'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, so a best practice I'll um, talk a little bit about is the Bridgewater Project in Winnipeg. It's a housing development uh, initiated by the province of Manitoba. It's the first neighborhood in Canada that includes a large proportion of visitable homes. Uh, when it's completed, it'll feature approximately 1,200 single-family homes uh, built with visitable features. Uh, I know you can't see much detail on this map, but uh, 
This is a site plan for Bridgewater, and all the red uh, lots are visitable lots. Again, here's just an illustration of uh, uh, how the Bridgewater uh, neighborhood is designed. So you have a street and then visitable homes on each side, and then they built a pathway system uh, at the back of each home that uh, goes throughout the neighborhood. Uh, here's an illustration of one of the homes. So you can see uh, it's graded up towards the front of the home, and then uh, some of them have walkout basements. Uh, and it's sloped towards the back of the home. <clears throat> uh, here's one street in Bridgewater. Uh, all these homes uh, are visible. You can't see because of the, the trees and that, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. Um, so we did, one of the things we did was a case study on the Bridgewater development, uh, so that uh, that included a document review, uh, individual interviews with 21 participants, and a resident survey with uh, 40 residents. Uh, some of the findings were that uh, Bridgewater was the fastest selling neighborhood in Winnipeg, um, that visible housing is marketable and has marketing value. Um, the most positive feedback came from residents. Uh, building professionals noted that their perception of visitable housing had changed from skepti skeptical or resistant to positive. Some of the negative we, uh, feedback we heard was around additional costs, uh, construction issues, uh, restrictions on basement height and windows, and uh, the reduced living spaces on the main floor as a result of the visitable features. But uh, again, that uh, feedback was very minimal, uh, the negative feedback. Um, I'll just go through some of uh, the task forces and uh, some of the work they did. Uh, in terms of our RPC First Nations task force, uh, they redrafted housing policies. Um, they passed a resolution at the 2015 BC First Nations Summit, uh, which um, the resolution called for um, the development of more visible homes across uh, British Columbia and First Nations communities. And then uh, they took a resolution to the 2015 AFN Annual Gen General Assembly, uh, and that was passed. And uh, what that resolution called for was uh, for the task force to work with uh, AFN across Canada to promote visitability in uh, First Nations communities. And that's something they're going to continue working on uh, beyond the end of this project. Our Richmond task force uh, created a website, did public presentations, uh, promoted visible housing through a number of different avenues. Uh, a number of experts presented to the task force. Um, they measured, uh, mailed out brochures to over 800 parking permit holders, uh, and they did a survey with renovators. Our Edmonton task force did a dinner dialogue uh, with city councillors and other uh, politicians. Uh, they ran a support letter campaign, did public presentations, uh, presented to city hall and administrative staff. Uh, one of the things they f uh, focused on was to try to incorporate um, visibility in the new Blatchford development that they're, uh, that's underway in Edmonton. So Edmonton has a old airport in the center of the city and uh, they decommissioned it and they're developing housing uh, in that uh, area. So one of the things they wanted to do is try to, uh, their, our task force wanted to try to um, get the city to uh, mandate a certain number of visitable homes in that area. Uh, unfortunately, the city didn't end up going for it, but um, they have committed to, um, to um, maybe doing some pilot projects in other areas of the city around visitability. Uh, our Winnipeg Task Force developed guidelines and standards around visitability. Uh, they worked with student groups on awards programs. They did conference out, uh, outreach, uh, did an education seminar with realtors, and uh, created a number of different promotional items. Uh, Kitchener Waterloo, I think we can skip this one, Trudy already uh, gave us an overview of that. Um, this, uh, sorry, what's that? Can we get our gold star? Yeah, yeah. definitely. 
Um, the Ottawa Task Force worked with the City of Ottawa's Affordable Housing Unit, and uh, the Affordable Housing Unit within the City of Ottawa has committed uh, to developing uh, a percentage of visitable uh, units in all of their um, projects going forward. Uh, the City of Ottawa includes visitability in their 2015 accessibility design standards. Uh, the task force also did outreach to the surrounding municipalities. They held a visitable townhouse competition and uh, did various trade shows and media opportunities. So in terms of the overall projects, there's uh, some lessons, strategies, and recommendations. Uh, take a most, one of the things we learned was to take a multifaceted approach and reach out to all stakeholders. Uh, consider both mandatory requirements and um, incentives. Look for opportunities where visibility can be incorporated over the short term as well as the long term. Uh, market visibility is an option for everyone, not just people with disabilities. And uh, one thing we learned was that further work is required to promote the concept. Uh, we felt that the project was too short to gain much traction. Uh, in terms of the next steps, as I mentioned, we're in the process of wrapping up this project. Um, we'll be leaving the website up as a resource for anyone who wants to access uh, information about visitable housing. So our website is visible housingcanada.com and um, we're also creating a magazine as a final promotional piece um, and uh, so that'll be released in the next week or so and um, we did get a, a pot of funding from CMHC to do some additional work with stakeholders to um, sort of drill down to some, some of the key issues uh, around visitability and uh, just sort of tease out some details in terms of um, you know, what they think is good about visibility, what, um, what they still have concerns about, and uh, we're still going to continue to do some work in that area. Uh, thanks for your time, and thanks for coming today. Thanks, Alan. So, next up we 